Welcome back to the channel guys and today's video is on my ultimate scouting guide in FM24 because let's be honest who wants these when you can have these let's do it so first things first and we're talking about scouting budgets obviously this is something that most people know but if you don't then I'm just going to cover it really fast scouting budget is a budget you get every single year and it de determines how many players you can have in your scouting range so I had an initial season budget of 390k so I went with the most expensive which was 360k um, you guys can do any of these. This method, what I'm about to show you, what I do, it can work with every single one. You just have to scale the uh, scale the scouting down. That's all you have to do. The more scouts you have, the more areas you probably want them to go. So get the biggest scouting package if you possibly can. Also, if you really, if uh, I would recommend, to be honest, is I would move my transfer budget over to my scouting budget. Let's say you've got like 11 million and you're only scouting one area of Europe that you're in. I would move some transfer budget over there and then just go to world just makes your life a bit easier and you can see a lot more players another thing to note is don't always trust your scouts 100 percent. they are really a guide and you guys trust yourselves because sometimes a scout will come back with a bad rating or a really harsh rating for a good player or a seemingly good player and that's because they don't just focus on how good that player is right they focus on things like if they need a work permit if they do then it'll be a lower rating if uh, if they're not homegrown they might have a lower rating um, how likely they are to adapt to your team or your new country that you are managing in. If they're not very good at adapting, then it'll be lower. Um, and things like, you know, if your board want you to sign under 23 players or players from certain areas, if they're not from that area, they'll also have a slightly lower rating. So they consider all those things before they give you the final rating. So another little tip for everyone is if you're like maybe on deadline day or a week before deadline day and you want a scout report on someone real quick because you're not sure if you sign him or not, if you go into your recruitment focus in here and scout priorities and then you've got a list of all the players uh, that your scouts are getting round to scouting. Let's say I want one for Chan Uzun at the bottom. If I want him to be scouted quicker, I just drag him to the top and then the next scout report that I get in my inbox will be him and then I can make a decision quicker. So if you've got hundreds of these and you want to scout someone really fast, find them on the list and then drag him to the top and then you guys will get that first and then they'll go on to the next priorities, etc. So now I'm going to show you guys how I set it up and I'm going to show you also my spreadsheet that I've set up because I'm a bit of a nerd. So I've got nine recruitment focuses here. Um, I'm going to show you the West Africa one because why not? Um, at the moment, we've got three people that they've recommended through. Daniel Dagger from Enyimba. Looks pretty good for 17 years old. Looks like a nice little signing. Very cheap. And Adiele Eriugo. Um, wow, actually. <laughs> very good striker. Um, nine technique's a little bit low, but he's rapid. He can dribble, finish, pace. I mean, first touch, head in. Determination's good. I might actually check out that guy and, uh, and sign him because he's wanted by PSV and Braga. There you go. So straight away, we've got a guy there. We might be able to play 300, 400K um, from a Nigerian professional team. And yeah, so this works. So this West, Af West Africa one, um, I have the West African countries, obviously. I like to only have five countries per scout anymore, and it takes them a bit too long, I find. Um, so if you come up here and you go to any, that means it gets, you don't have to pick from a tactic. So my tactic that I'm playing on, my, uh, on, on this save is Palmer, and I'm playing this formation. So it won't find me central midfielders, um, for example, or it won't be find me attacking midfielders, attacking midfield right. So if we go to any... And then we go to any position from tactic. It gives you any single position from any tactic, right? Makes sense. So make sure you're doing that firstly. I'm going to walk you through that bit because it makes sense. And then I'm going to call it West Africa because that's where the scout's going. It's easy for me to remember. Um, I want to do transfers. I don't really want to loan players. I want my own players to buy, to, to develop them myself. Um, I've gone with a minimum current ability of one star to try, of try and get everyone. If I, if I make that two stars... There'll be plenty of one and a half stars from lesser countries or not as bigger countries. Um, and I might miss one. Uh, so one star is fine. I obviously have 15 to 18. I don't want any older than 18 because I want them to be homegrown. Um, I want to get them at 18. And then I want them to be homegrown by the time they're 21, right? Makes sense to me. You guys can have 21 years old, 19, 20, whatever you want. Um, and they have minimum potential ability at four. Um, I find that that's a good one. It, it gets everyone in. And if um, it gives uh, one of the scouts gives like a harsh rating on someone, like I mentioned previously in the video, I can rescout them and make my own decision. Um, UK guys can do whatever you want on that, but that's for me. And then this is the main part, the areas part. So in obviously West Africa, we have five West African countries and the biggest ones, um, Senegal, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Cameroon. Now, what you obviously can do is you can go to continent, uh, sorry, region, sorry. And then you can go to Africa and then I could have gone to Western Africa. But the problem with that 
is I don't like to do continents because there's plenty of countries inside those continents that scouts will waste their time in and there's not likely to be players there. For example, if you send a scout to Central Europe and because you're wanting him to go to Germany and places like that, he's going to waste a bit of time at some point because he's in Central Europe uh, scouting in Liechtenstein and places like that, that you're never going to find a player. You might, but you're very, very lucky. So you might as well just streamline it, cut to the chase and just put the countries in that you want to scout because that way they will only go to those countries and they won't waste time in smaller countries where you're not really going to find someone. The next area is the priority and we want to go ongoing. We don't want to keep doing it. We want to go ongoing. It keeps going all the way over. And then we want to find the scout that you want to set to that. Now, this area here is easier for me deciding on which scout because I'm going to show you the spreadsheet in a second and I'll, and I'll, and I'll explain and you'll be able to see why it's easier for me. So click which scout you want to send for that um, and then click confirm. Um, this box here, it's up to you. It's totally up to you. Um, it just includes results found in other recruitment focuses. So if you want to see a guy... Um, twice, um, click that button because if you see him twice, you might be like, all oh, right, two scouts are recommending him, for example. So I just tick it. Uh, you don't have to. It's, it's up to you. And then you click confirm, right? No problem with that. So here is my spreadsheet and I've just put it together. Uh, it's fairly simple. It's nothing like amazingly in depth, but it's just got the scout scout's name, attributes, so adaptability, which is obviously what we want that quite high. Adaptability for people that don't know is um, the willing the ability to be able to adapt to uh, more countries that they don't know scouting knowledge yet so if someone you're sending someone to um asia and they haven't got any knowledge of asia but they've got 20 adaptability they will learn those areas quicker than someone with five or ten right so the higher the adaptability the better and then obviously jpa is judging potential ability and jpp is judging player potential i just put like to put them there so i get to see who i need to upgrade on next so for example francisco thomas who's um arguably doing our uh, most important region which is argentina and brazil primarily and then there's obviously these three here quite big nations um i might want to upgrade francisco thomas at some point at the moment i can't find anyone but i will be doing that it's just to keep a little track for me it's up to you what you guys want to do and then I, here i've got where is he scouting where is that scout scouting and like i said i like it to have five people five countries at each for each scout so I split them up. I split the world up. So for example, Hendrik Anderson here, he's doing Scandinavia. He's doing five countries, the biggest five countries for me in Scandinavia. Um, Budimir Vujicic is doing basically like Eastern Europe, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Bosnia, Bulgaria. Now they're not doing specifically each region each because there's a few that overlap, but I'm trying to get every single one into each, into each scout, each nations that I want. So um, Gerard Bonner here is doing West Africa, as we've just seen on, on FM. Uh, Luciano Canepa is doing one side of South America. And Francisco Tomas is doing the other side of South America. Um, Ozan Pulat is doing North America, uh, North Africa, sorry, with South Africa in there, just thrown in. Because obviously I'm not just going to set up one scout just to do South Africa. So I've thrown North and South Africa, North and South Africa, yeah, together into one. Makes sense. Um, Zabinden is a Swiss, a Swiss uh, scout. I've put him in doing countries near Switzerland, Austria, Germany, Poland, Hungary. And then Pacini, I've not decided what I'm going to do with him yet. I also want some scouts from um, Asia. So I'm going to try and find to, to go and scout like Japan and Korea, uh, Australia, places like that. I also want someone to go to Saudi, Qatar, because I've got a lot of money over there now, so the fa uh, facilities will be better. But this is what I've got for this save. I'll obviously change it in different saves, but it's just something that I like to do so I get to see who's doing what, right? It makes total sense to me. Following on for that, another interesting screen is the scouting coverage screen. So if you just click scouting coverage, scouting assignments, it will show you guys, the, you guys which scout is in which country right now. So all those countries are countries that I want. For example, like I said before, if I sent someone to Central Europe, I might see down here that someone is in, like I mentioned before, Liechtenstein. I don't want that. So I'm just sending people to countries and not regions. That's what I would suggest you guys to do, like I said. And that's the reason why. I always like to explain why I do things on this channel. Just so I'm not just saying, telling you guys to do things. And there's no reason why you should do it. Right? I like to let you know my thought process. And then you guys can be like, oh yeah, do you know what? That makes sense. So, this is a nice little page that you guys can see. Um, obviously, you can click on your world knowledge as well. And you guys can see which countries you have your knowledge in. Obviously, the uh, the brighter the green, the best one you can have. You can click on them if you want and it zooms in. Uh, you can see which countries, etc. like that. Totally up to you. No problem. You can even click on nations. 
And yeah, I just, it, you mess around with that little screen. It's quite cool. Obviously, people have different ways of doing things. So if you guys want to go through each scouting report one by one, you can do this and you can see all the information you want. But you can also click on the list and it gives you all the list of the people inside your scouting center at the moment. You can select them all. You can clear them all. It's totally up to you what you do. You can click a few if you hold, I think, it's shift like that. And then you can get rid of a few. It's totally up to you. Like I said, a lot of people, I think, starts on cards and you have to go through one each uh, each one by one but if you click list you can see them all and you can sort by potential but that's totally up to you another little trick on top of that is this year i think they've just introduced this if you're going to world and then we're going to uh, so we go in the globe and then we go to world and then we go to list it brings up the list of the highest reputation clubs in the world but if we click on the reputation thing here and we go to youth academy now it tells you guys which youth academies are the best if we search by youth academy rating at the top so these guys are all the best academies inside the game. Um, you can also go to like major or major and minor clubs, but this is all clubs. Independiente, Del Valle in Ecuador, four star. That's where Caicedo came from in real life. And the wonder kid, Kendry Paez, who's just been signed to Chelsea. There you can see like Ulsan in Korea, Defensor Sporting in Uruguay. As you can see, if you keep going down, Saudi Arabia, there's Al Hilal. They've got a good academy. And you guys, if you want, at each youth intake time, maybe like, march april wherever you want you guys can check each of these ones at the top quickly um which which clubs have got the best youth intake so for example if i wanted to check i don't know i'm going to go to defense or sporting because i get good players from there and then we want to go to the under 19 squad and then we find out who's come through their academy there's also a bug at the moment where you used to be able to check which guys came through in um in each club each year by youth academy intake you go to their transfer page and then you click youth and then you just toggle through each season and it would show you the guys that came through their youth intakes that is something that you guys should do in conjunction with what i've just told you on the youth reputation page or the academy page but there's a bug at the moment it's not showing up so i'm hoping today when the game comes out initially when the patch comes out they know about that and they fix it so they shows you guys who's came through in the youth academy so that's how I do scouting. That's how I keep up to date on my scouting and know what's going on. A few little tips and tricks in there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please leave a like. Or drop a comment if there's something that you guys don't know or you're wanting to ask me or you're wanting to clarify. No problem. I'll answer every single comment always. And please subscribe to the channel. That'll be absolutely amazing. And until next time, I'll catch you then. Goodbye.